Hello, 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 creators. It's Shayna. Just give me one second while I post this live link to my Facebook group. Hey, Sin, good morning or afternoon over there where you're at. Give me one second. Can you let me know if the audio is decent? Hey Liz, Four Corners, Miss Dolly, hello, hello. Hey Miss Mina, you sound great, awesome. Cause whenever I went live, I wasn't sure if my microphone was picking up the audio or if my computer is picking up the audio. But y'all are saying it's good, so it's good. So there is a digitizer that I know, her name is Melissa, her shop is called Designs by Little B. I absolutely love her designs. You might've seen some tutorials that I've done by her before. And I found this one, it's a vaccine card holder and I think it's so adorable. I posted it to our Facebook group and I had a few um, messages on my inbox on how exactly to do it. So I said, you know what, let's just go live and show the creators how to make this. How are you doing, Sin? What's going on in your world today? You going live? Am I cutting into your live time? No, I'm just playing. All right, so let's just go over the supplies that we're gonna use for this project. So for this black part that you see here, we're gonna be using two pieces of blackboard fabric. All these fabrics can be found at Joanne Fabrics. So you can get it in your local community. Let me make sure. One second. Okay, make sure it's focusing. All right, so you're gonna be using two pieces of blackboard fabric. For this part right here, this is just some basic um, fabric, cotton, so for this live, we're gonna be using this red Christmas theme fabric. On the back, I have already pre-pressed some heat and bond light to it. The reason why you wanna use the heat and bond with the purple label is because this one is gonna be compatible with your embroidery machines, your sewing machines. You don't wanna use the heat and bond light that has a red label or any other color label because it might damage your machine. All right, so we have our fabric, two pieces of blackboard, vinyl you can also use marine vinyl and then for this part right here so the pink part that you see here this is pink vinyl this is a white piece of paper that i stuck inside of it this is the pink vinyl i just went ahead and purchased the entire bolt because i knew that i was going to be making a lot of these projects You can also find this vinyl in clear, but this is just pink. All right, we'll scoot that over. Today, we're gonna to be using a 5.5 inch Mighty Hoop. And we're also gonna be using a 5.5 inch backing holder. And this is just gonna hold your stabilizer in place. And I will show you guys how to go ahead and hoop that correctly. Hello, Diane Robinson, Mary Brown. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Feel free to share this video. And for the stabilizer, we're gonna be using um, this Filtech brand stabilizer and it's 1.3 ounces of tearaway. I like it because the size is eight inches by eight inches and it fits perfectly into the 5.5 inch hoops. All right, this is just a piece of paper that I went ahead and measured the dimensions here. Cut it out, 
stuck it in there. Yes, it does say that it fits a vaccination card. However, you can put whatever you want into it. You could put a um, gift card inside here. You could put anything you want in there. All right. So for the front, this is just polyester thread that we're using here. And then this is a ribbon that I tied into a bow. This is the ribbon that we're using. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop it into the chat. Miss Marissa, how you doing? Happy Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. And then, so if you can see this piece right below the ribbon, these are called grommets. And I will also be showing you how to install the grommets. So the grommets that we're using, we're gonna be using our cam snaps. So make sure that you have a press, handheld press. This one specifically is a tabletop press. We're gonna be using that today as well as you're gonna be using your seven millimeter top die. I keep everything in the little baggies because there's so many different sizes. It'll really help you stay organized if whenever you order these, and this is from the brand called Cam Snaps. If you order these dies, they come labeled in these little bags. Whenever I'm done using a certain die, I just go ahead and put it back into the bag and put it into my little container so that I don't have to try to guess how many millimeters this is. So this is the top cutting die. This is going to pair with the bottom part of the cutting die. And it looks like this. That. The seven millimeter, 7.1 millimeter grommets is actually in the machine. So I'll go ahead and show you what those look like. This is a 7.1 millimeter grommet. This is the top and this is the bottom. Grommet press. And I'll go slow when I'm actually showing you guys how to use it. The grommet that you see on this, I chose to use the gunmetal color because I thought that it went well with the black blackboard fabric. I thought that it went really nicely with that. And I'll show you what those look like. I linked um, Melissa. She's the owner of Designs by Little B. I linked this specific in the hoop file that you can make with your embroidery machine. As long as you have a hoop that's at least five by seven, because I believe that's what the file says. As long as you have that size five by seven, then you're going to be able to make this project. And this is what the 7.1 millimeter grommets look like. Okay. So let's just scoot that out of frame. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and prepare the fabrics that we're using. So I already went ahead and cut this to size, as you see. She gives you the exact measurements that you need to cut. I just made it a little bit bigger than the design. I wanted to cut this red fabric with you guys on camera. So you're just gonna grab your scissors. These aren't anything special. These are actually labeled paper because they're, you know, the scissors that you don't really care about. You're just gonna need one piece of pretty fabric. Pretty fabric as in, you're just gonna need one piece of the fabric that you want to show on the front. So your cotton fabric. And the reason why you wanna back it with a heat and bond is because you don't want it to fray. Okay, Miss Eve. Thank you for my three hearts. Hope you're having a good day over there. All right, so I have my one piece that's gonna go on top of the, this piece right here. That's gonna go on the back like that. And then we need one piece of this pink vinyl. Just 
So, Miss Eve, I just want to let you know that you kind of sparked my interest with this whole rhinestone situation. I told myself I wasn't going to do rhinestones because I don't have any more space in this office for any more supplies. Every inch of these walls is taken up by equipment, supplies, random office stuff. I was like, oh my goodness. But the creations that you guys have been making, oh my goodness. All right. You have your two blackboard fabrics. You have your vinyl piece. And we have, we're gonna go ahead, just so I don't forget when we're at the actual machine. Once you iron on your heat and bond, don't forget to peel off this white piece of paper. Just, I'm gonna go ahead and peel it off right now so I don't forget to do it later. There's always room for bling, yes ma'am. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for stopping in and saying hello. Yes, Eve for Sheriff. And then, so Lizzie said that we can make 25 of them and create sort of an advent calendar, write a secret challenge or activity in each of them and hang them all over the tree. That's a super cute idea. And to go with that theme of hanging it on the tree, if you guys are having any work holiday parties, and you guys are giving out cash or gift cards, you could also make this for a gift card, stick your gift card on it, and then also hang these from the tree. I think that that would be super cute. All right, big boy. Nice to see your name in the chat box. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I appreciate you guys so much. Okay, so go ahead and grab your Mighty Hoop or any hoop that you have. We are using Mighty Hoops today. If you are interested in purchasing, let me make sure that I'm centered here. All right, there we go. Now we're in the center. If you guys are interested in purchasing Mighty Hoops, I have a code. The code is Krauss Creations, which if you call the number in the description box, if you call over there and ask the Mighty Hoops headquarters, any questions, or if you want to make a purchase, just use my code, Krauss Creations, and you will receive free shipping. That is the same discount that you would use if you already have a Mighty Hoops dealer. They're providing you with free shipping, and that is the same deal that I'm able to provide you as well, free shipping. Mighty Hoops doesn't really have any, you know, Black Friday sales or anything like that because they pride themselves in the fact that these products are made in the USA and it is a little bit more expensive to produce your things in America. So that is why they're so high. I'm getting off track. Okay. Anyways, Mighty Hoop, grab your eight by eight inch stabilizer. Go ahead and put your stabilizer and I'm using tear away. You can use cut away, tear away. It doesn't matter because we're just going to be cutting it out at the end. Go ahead and get your backing frame holder. And you're just gonna go like that. If you guys have any questions, can't see anything like that, go ahead and you know give me some red uh, emojis in the chat box so it catches my attention. Feel free to have conversations amongst yourselves. So just a reminder, whenever you're using your mighty, ah, settle down now. Once you're using your mighty hoops, the nub here, that's gonna be always pointing towards your belly. And this warning sign is gonna be pointing towards the machine. All we're gonna do is hoop the stabilizer. We are not hooping any fabrics or any of the uh, blackboard fabric, marine vinyl, anything like that. All we're doing is hooping the stabilizer only. The way that you use Mighty Hoop, all you do is you just kind of swoop it like that. Sorry if that was a little bit loud, you guys. Yes, it is loud in real life. Before you start your project, you're gonna make sure that you remove the backing holder. All we used it for is to hold the stabilizer in place. We're done with that for the rest of the project. So this is what it looks like and we are gonna go ahead and head over to the machine. All right, Miss Kimberly Collins, I'm so excited to see you. All right, so let's go ahead. 
I'm gonna move you guys. Not focusing. Is it focused or not? Oh, my little uh, view it is not focused. Why are you doing this to me right now? All right, there we go. to take you guys over to the machine. Sorry, trying to get you guys stable. All right, cool. We're there, we're good. All you're gonna do now, let's see, you guys can see. YouTube is delayed, so I'm trying to, Yeah, okay, cool, you guys can see. All right, go ahead and grab your Mighty Hoop. All you're gonna do is stick it in the machine. All right, the first stitch is just gonna be a placement stitch. Hi, Miss Deborah. All right, you guys are good. The first stitch is just gonna be a placement stitch, so let's go ahead and hit. And it's a placement stitch that's showing us where to place our first piece of blackboard fabric. don't need to remove it from the machine. However, I'm going to remove it so that you guys can see. This is what's stitched out. This is your placement stitch. You're just going to take your piece of blackboard fabric and you're going to put it right on top, just like that. stop what it did now is it made a placement which is exactly what I showed you guys before it made a placement for you to know where to put your blackboard fabric now it's a placement for you to know where to put your pretty fabric so we're using this red colored fabric here you're just going to put it right on top make sure you cover the stitches that's what it's for once it's on there go ahead and hit start So this is where we are right now. This is what it looks like. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna quickly trim around here. I'm just gonna quickly trim around that real quick. I just didn't want to have to move the camera to go ahead and move it back. I'm using these tiny little curved scissors. I'm not aiming that pretty well, but they're just uh, curved Fisker scissors. So what's going on over there? What are you guys up to today? Oh, I see your name, Demps. All right, all right, Miss Lakeisha. Just trimming around outside. So this is what it's gonna look like now. This is the pieces that we trimmed off. All I did is I took my little snips and I trimmed around the perimeter. Okay, go ahead and stick it right back on the machine. It's gonna do the nice satin stitch now. The satin stitch is this thick Miss Sheila from Baby Moon Embroidery asked if we could say a prayer. She's asking for prayer warriors. Thank you, Miss Deborah, for posting that in the chat. Um, I'm using blackboard fabric because I feel like it's more durable than marine vinyl. However, a lot of people do use marine vinyl for this type of project. But blackboard fabric, like when you feel it, it's more, I feel like it's stronger. And I got that from Joann's. Do you guys think that we could use this this card holder for other than the holding your medical cards, holding your gift cards? What other ideas do you think that we could use this for?
Hello, Miss Olu. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, Miss Eve. A sign for a wall hanging type. Yep. Oh, yeah. You can maybe put a, a, a photo in it. Ooh. Or like for, you can put this on the wall or you can put this on the tree. If you have an article of clothing that's from a family member that's no longer with us, if you had a piece of their shirt and use that as a pretty fabric on top, and then on the other side, you can put a photo of them. Memorial gifts. The, the YouTube and show you guys. Okay, yeah, right there. See how it has the red satin stitch, then the red fabric and the blackboard. So on the back, this is what it's looking like. You could see all the bobbin thread on the back. All right, we don't want to be able to see that and it's okay that there's a little thread here. We're gonna go ahead, you won't be able to see that once everything's all covered up, but we're gonna go ahead and take that extra piece of your blackboard fabric that we had, and we're gonna go ahead and just tape it to the back. Whenever you're taping it to the back, make sure that this extra fabric is covering all these stitches, as well as that top little stitches that you see up here, that's where the grommet is gonna go. I'm gonna grab a piece of tape. I cannot find my my uh, dispenser of painter's tape because that's what I would normally be using. I use painter's tape for everything embroidery related. Cannot find it. I think my son might have used it because whenever he's playing with his Hot Wheels and building his tracks, he likes to take my tape. So I just put two pieces of tape on here just to hold it in place. I'm trying my best to angle this. Okay, yeah, you guys see it. The two pieces of tape, nothing fancy. It's just on there to hold it in place so it doesn't get uh, snagged. What's gonna happen now? It's just gonna tack this down. It's only gonna do the top. I'm just looking at the bottom to make sure that my fabric is in bent. Everything is good. We're going to go ahead and hit start. tack this back fabric onto the back of this. There is an extra piece of thread hanging off. I will cut that off so it doesn't look ugly. You can take a lighter to it or you could just cut it off. All it is is the tails. It's not gonna damage the actual project. Okay, so if you guys can see, let me see. Focus. Okay, so if you're looking at the back of the project right now, you see where it stopped here and stopped there? That's our indicators on where we want to put our pink fabric. Okay. Get back in the frame. Okay. So you see this, this right here and this right here? You want to butt up this line of your vinyl that you cut out and you're just gonna put it right under it. 
Okay, I want to look straight to you. Just go ahead and put a little piece of tape. I do not recommend using scotch tape, guys. I like to use painter's tape. But that's just what we have right now. So we're just taping on this pink vinyl. And we're just going to go ahead and head back to the machine. Make sure that it did not get folded over once you put it in there. Good. And then we're just going to hit start. This is the last step. you know that your project is done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move you guys back down here to my desk. This is crooked. Thank you for your patience. I haven't been live for a minute. good there. Okay. Yay! Who's getting all those hearts? Those heart face emojis. Alright, so go ahead and we're going to remove the project from the Mighty Hoops. So this is what the back looks like. And like I said, we went ahead and used tape around this. You don't, you can go ahead and take the tape off if you want, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna cut around the project. So you won't be able to see that tape anyways. All right, and then if you see any tails hanging, go ahead and cut them off now. Oh yeah, those are the, I think that Mighty Hoops are really good hoops, big boy. So go ahead and order some once you get your embroidery machine and go ahead and use my 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 affiliate code, Crafts Creations. All right. Appreciate you, sir. All right. So this, this little cutting mat is from the Dollar Tree. One dollar for this cutting mat. All right. Let me grab a roller. You could totally freehand it right now. You could use your scissors to cut around it if you want. But because I'm most likely going to be gifting this, I want the lines to be straight. So all I'm going to do is just take my ruler 
and I'm just lining it, lining it up. And I'm doing this so that all the seams, all the sides have the exact same amount of blackboard cut off of it. See how that looks now? I don't know what I was looking at when I was cutting the bottom. <laughs> All right, that's how it looks now. This is what the back looks like. And we are just gonna go ahead. Now I'm gonna freehand it. So what I do, I'm gonna make this a rounded corner, go around it, and then I'm also gonna round off these corners on the end too. Rounding the corners, just rounding the corners because I'm not trying to poke anybody. Oh, thank you, Norma. I'm glad that you're here too. I hope I'm able to teach you something. This is what it's looking like now. This is the one that we started off with. We just used some patriotic fabric. This is Christmas fabric, the red sand stitch. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and punch a hole into it and to attach the grommets. Hi, baby girl. What are you doing? Out. This okay. I don't want to wait. Okay, you don't have to. Okay, go to the Give me one second, okay? Give mommy one second. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over so you guys can see what I'm installing. We're gonna go ahead and install the seven millimeter top die that goes into this part of the cam snap. It has threads on the top of it. You're just gonna thread it into the top of the press. This is the bottom piece. And you're just gonna go ahead and place it into there. All right, so the way that this works is, yes, it's on its side right now. When you use it, it's gonna be upright, but it's gonna go ahead and press down in this motion like this, and it's gonna cut a seven millimeter hole into your fabrics, all right? So. So if you've watched my channel for any amount of time now, you know that I like to preserve everything. So I didn't want to have to replace this bottom part so so quickly because, you know, whenever you're punching a bunch of uh, the die presses into it, you're going to be making indents into the bottom of this part. So I take my Dollar Tree cutting mat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Dollar Tree cutting mat on top of this so that when I put our project on here and I cut a hole right here that I know that once it hits this rubber part that it's cut, all right? Normally what you would do is you would just have your top die part that we just inserted. You'd have this part here. Let's turn this over so you can see. You would have your project and you would just cut into it. And I do believe that you would be 
dueling down not only the blade, but you'd be having to replace this so much sooner. All right, so what I'm gonna do, like I said, I just put my Dollar Tree cutting mat here. I'm gonna go ahead and press down right here, try to make it center. Try not to cut your threads. Once you like the spot that it's in, just press down. It's so easy to push. Not a lot of force is even necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and push down now. Watch, you'll see right there. It pressed, go like that. And it went ahead and made a hole. This is a seven millimeter um, cut hole that we just did right there. Okay, go ahead. That's all we needed that for. Go ahead, unscrew the top die, put it back into your die bag so you don't lose it. You don't need this bottom part anymore. We're gonna go ahead and take the 7.1 grommet dies, okay? 7.1 grommet dies and we're gonna go ahead and insert Insert, attach. The seven millimeter grommets using the seven millimeter grommet dies to our project. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hello, Shannon, welcome. You said, I'm late, sorry. Where did you get your dies for the press? This is all from the website called Cam Snaps. And it's the letter K for Cam. All right, so go ahead. We're gonna thread this top part. And the this card holder that we did, that is from Designs by Little B. Okay, and then you're going to take your project, depending on what part you want the open, okay, I don't know the right terminology to use, but see how this is the pretty side of the grommet, and this is kind of like the back side of the grommet here. I wanted the pretty side of my grommet to be where the pretty side of the fabric is, so. Hello, grommet, where are you going? Insert it just like that, turn it over, if you see here, that circle part that you have, you're just gonna put it on there, okay? And then, so you see the pretty side of this grommet is gonna go to the bottom of the press. So here's the bottom of the press, here's the top of the press, and you're gonna put it in like that. I'm gonna stand this up upright, it's only on its side, for this tutorial for showing you guys real quick. Again, pretty side of the grommet, back side of the grommet, we're just gonna go ahead and put it down just like that. It fits in it perfectly and we're just gonna go ahead and push down. Not a lot of force is required. That's why I really enjoy using this tabletop press. Um, the handheld ones, you kinda have a lot of wrist exhaustion and um, hand problems because you're having to press so hard and use so much force. This it makes it so much, makes it very effortless. Okay, so we went ahead and finished that, move it out of the way. The last part of this project is just to put a cute little ribbon. There's not a certain length that you need to cut. Hi Sandy, PJ Mommy. Hello Bernadette, Sunset Stitches, JBM. Long time no see. Leslie B, hello, hello to everybody. Um, there's no certain length that you need to make this ribbon, all right? So we're just gonna go ahead and take our scissors and we're just gonna cut it at an angle. I think that it just adds a little touch when you cut it at an angle. It makes it look fancy. Oh, hold on, that's not the ribbon I wanted to use. That was for the patriotic thing. One second. We're 
we're gonna use this ribbon. Go ahead, just take your ribbon, insert it into the hole. This is kind of cute like that, even without the bow. I like it. Okay, let me fix this ribbon. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. Cute. All right, go ahead and zoom in. All right, you guys, there we have it. Our in the hoop card holder. All right, and you can find all the links in the description. We went ahead and started off with this one. And then, like we said, the different ideas that we had, you can make your 25 of these and use it as an advent calendar. You can go ahead and use it as an ornament. You can take the fabric of one of your loved ones and use that as your um, fabric that's going to be on top near the satin stitch. And on the back, you could put a photo of that member. Um, there were so many ideas in the comments, and I really appreciate you guys um, participating in the chat. And thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and hit end now. And I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.